This is 10 Money Rules for Financial Success. Hi guys, we're thrilled to bring you our last video which delivers into the essential topic of Money Rules for Financial Success. Your continued encouragement and engagement mean the words to us and we can't wait to share this valuable insight with you. So, without further ado, let's dive right into the world of financial wisdom and success. Thank you for being part of our journey and let's make this another enriching experience together. A few years back, I was always in the very frustration where bills would constantly pile up and yet I had no money to pay them off. If you have ever been this situation, then you probably know that it can be really stressful and hard on you. The good news is that over time I did manage to crawl my way out of this situation and you can too. Therefore, in today's video, I'll be sharing with you all tips, tricks, and strategies that you can use to get out of this situation and hopefully get a hit in your own personal finances. Stay tuned. However, before I get into the topic, do me a favor, subscribe and hit the like button because it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you and now let's get into it. Alright, so the list begin with keep track of your spending. You've probably already heard this a million times and you are going to hear it again today simply because it works and because you are probably not doing it. Basically, it should always be priority. Make sure that every single penny you spend is clearly accounted for. The basic goals of expenses tracking is to find and get rid of inefficient spending pattern in your financial life. Additionally, maintaining control over your finances and encouraging better financial practice like saving and investing will come from continuously keeping track of your costs. Basically, in the words of Peter Tucker, if you can share it, you can manage it. So, this is what you sold to, to get in control of your spending habits. First, analyze your categories of spending to determine which are the most crucial. Perhaps you might even find out that you've been paying for a subscription that you're not using. I know I have. And maybe you are too. Most people consider that cutting back on these non-essential expenses is a wise approach to saving money. You might be also want to go for activities that are less expensive that you can see where your money is going and on top of saving money you'll be getting educated on some of the topics you'll be reading about so there really isn't much to lose by doing this second make a budget i never understood why most people did not have a budget until recently you see most people are worried about all the paperwork to be done to complete a budget. Well, in truth, it's not a lot of work, but it most certainly is worth it. You see, you should look at budgeting from a different angle. Look at the positive and look at how much is it going to benefit you. And once you've got a rhythm going make sure stick to it i found this to be the only way that works so 
Make sure you don't lose the momentum. If you create a budget and then store it away in a file or folder on your bookshelf or filling cabinet, it's simply worthless. So make sure you constantly updating and review it. You can also use digital apps and software to make this task a lot easier. There are a bunch of really good free ones online which you can find with a quick search. Third, give yourself a limit on unbudgeted spending. Buying something in the spur of the moment that you had budgeted for can be enjoyable and emotionally satisfying. Literally, everyone knows that. However, that emotional hype may pass quickly, leaving you with impulsive purchases you don't actually need or want. If this is you, then the bitter pill to swallow is that this has to stop. In fact, it's the entire opposite of good money habits. Next time you are in the small, try using the one person rule for spending money. This rule states that you have to wait a day before buying anything that costs more than 1% of you yearly gross income. So if you make 60,000 a year, the rule states that you need to wait a day before making a purchase of over 600. This guideline applies to discretionary spending on items you desire but don't require basically the inner better in your mind do i really need this versus do i want this 24 hour cooling off period give you time to reconsider your purchases why not take an additional day to consider if you actually need it after 24 hours you may not anymore so next time you go shopping Remember what that guy from Practical Wisdom taught you to try. Fault safe for big purchasing. Seeing a beautiful 4,000 advertisement of a stunning 90 inch flat screen. At K television. I mean, imagine the things you can see. That TV does not mean that you should immediately. Pick up your phone and credit card and start dialing the number on the screen. That's a really bad idea. Remember, the rule that came from Practical Wisdom taught you about the 24 hour one. Remember that? Are you remember? So, experts suggest that if you really want that big TV, then it's best that the money comes from your saving account which is dedicated for such progresses not a credit card loans unless you have a really good plan to pay the money back which 99% of people don't also there are countless advantages that come with saving for a big or expensive purchases you may be able to negotiate a cheaper price or at the very least better financing condition if you save up and pay cash. Additionally, for a large purchase, getting a loan may make more sense, especially if it's an item with appreciating value like a home or if it prevents you from taking money off your saving or investment account as paying in cash for the big expenses TV might leave you with little to spend therefore it's wise to save up for a while before you buy the product you need or desire therefore it's sensibly 
to start saving for that specific thing so that your daily life is not disrupted. Fifth, read books about finance. It's true when they say that if you want to hide something, just put it on a paper. The sad truth is that most people never bother to read. You see, of the things people choose to ignore, such as the information content in books, have a good chance of making them successful if they bother to read them. Learning is a continuous process and the more you do it the sharper your skills become the ability to make wise financial decision is the chief advance of financial literacy the ability to make wise financial decision is the chief advance of financial literacy it gives us the information and abilities we need to properly manage our finances, including budgeting, saving, borrowing, and investing. As a result, we are with the position to meet our financial objective and establish financial stability. It's kind of like a superpower, and it really puts you in a comfortable situation, knowing that you are in control of your financial destiny. 6. Lower your monthly bills Cutting your monthly spending is one of the simplest ways to get control of your money. While you may not be able to cut back on certain permanent costs, like rent or vehicle payments, without making significant lifestyle change, you can cut back on variable costs like clothes or entertainment by being adaptable and thinking sparingly to begin saving on things like your energy bills for instance use less power pick a different life or home insurance company or shop for groceries at the discount additionally you should accept a loan just because your salary and credit make you eligible for one Many people believe that the bank will not give them a credit card or a loan that they cannot afford. But the bank is only aware of the income you have disclosed and the debts shown on your credit report. The bank is unaware of any other commitment that will make it difficult for you to make timely payment based on your income and other monthly responsibilities. You must therefore determine if a monthly payment works for you. 7. Eat on your home. Meals prepared and consumed at home may be quite cost effective. All you have to do is reduce your reliance on takeout. The odd indulgence at a fancy restaurant is okay, but starting to cook at home or carrying packaged lunches to work rather than dining out every day may save you money. Making a weekly food plan may make it simple. Plan your meals for the coming week and then stick to them. Even for those who don't consider themselves to be cooks. The internet provides a seemingly limitless array of culinary and recipe advice. Begin by making at least one meal a week at home. Bring your lunches to work starting next week. You might be amazed by how much money you can actually save. It Pay off your debt. Carrying a lot of debt, especially on high interest credit cards, is one of the conscious mistakes you can make. If you want to improve your financial situation and open up new financial opportunities, pay off your debt as soon as possible. 
If you are the forgetful type, you should list off all your existing debts, including credit card debts, student loan debt, and vehicle loans, and determine the minimum payments you must make to stay on top each of them. Making minimum payment will not get out of debt quickly, so consider your fixed costs and how much of your discretionary spending budget you can set aside for debt repayment. Additionally, you can try to lower the interest rate on the debt by requesting a lower rate from the insurers merging several loans in the one or moving high interest to a low interest credit card. Set a balance transfer card to lower the overall interest rate. Afterwards, create a debt repayment strategy and develop responsible spending practice to pay off the debt as rapidly as possible. Your monthly budget will be large the faster you pay off your debt. As I previously said, pay off credit card debt must be a top priority. Unlike your automobile or house payment, it increases with time and is hard to cut back on. Ninth, stop using credit cards. Credit cards are a great and handy tool to have. They are a lifesaver when needed and they do a great job of getting that credit score up. However, for some people, their lack of self-control and an easy and available remedy to their problems in the form of credit cards means that they quickly dig themselves into disaster. You could be spending too much on your credit cards. If you are having trouble making ends meet each month, if you continue using your credit cards as a credit to get by, you'll soon find yourself in debt. Your ability to pay your expenses, save for retirement, or pursue other financial objectives will be concentrated as a result of this. So stop using your credit card if you generally want to take charge of your money. To prevent accumulating more debt, in addition to creating a budget so that you don't have to use credit, try switching to cash or debit cards, opening a certain saving account and using funds from it for major purchases, or leaving your credit card at home. Credit cards have high interest rates that may quickly accumulate debt if not used wisely and can cause significant stress in the event of an emergency because they feel like their money dispersed too quickly each month. Many people develop the bad habit of depending on their credit cards. They are tapped out and rely on their credit cards to get them through to pay the after pay bills, food, rent, or mortgage, and other expenses. Instead of relying only on your credit cards to cover expenses, stop using them altogether until you develop the wisdom and maturely to handle such an instrument. 10. Continue to spend quickly. A spending fast can be just what your personal finances need if you suffer from credit card debt, difficulties paying bills on time, or other financial problems. Basically, going on a spending fast simply means that you're refraining from making any discretionary for a predetermined length of time. This is another great way to help you reduce your spending and get your finances in order. It may sound a bit daunting, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. You may be familiar with the well-known and some things continuous detox or cleansing fast for your body, such as giving up sugar 
or gluten for three days, or even surviving solely on fruit or vegetable juice for a few weeks. But did you know that in order to achieve financial wellness, you may use comparable fasting or cleansing procedures to your spending and saving behaviors? These are frequently month-long period during which spending is restrictly and only categories like food, transportation, and recurring expenditure are ex expanded. If you are ready to live simply for a while, commit to this challenge to boost your bank account, alter your behavior and determine what you need rather than just what you desire. Your perspective on money can even change as a result of this event. It's my hope that this has been helpful to you. Now you can always be one step ahead of your finances by just following the step from this video. Consider the possibility that you have never had a financial problem. That simply means more money for you. If you have any question, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. With that said, thank you all so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.